everybody you're listening to. It's all about food. I'm Karen Hartglass. Thank you for joining me. It's dry January. Have you heard that? I know we've talked many years now about Veganuary, where people try and give up the animal, at least for January, if not for the whole year. Now we're talking about alcoholic beverages. And I think it's a really important conversation. And to jump right in with me, I have Dave and Susan Kenny, who are founders of the Amerigo Academy. And we're going to find out what that is and what they are about. So welcome to It's All About Food, Susan and Dave. Thanks for having us, Karen. We are pleased to be here. And yeah, dry January is a thing. People want to, I think for us, how we look at it is it's more about what you want to bring into your life and maybe not what you want to deny yourself of. So although I deeply respect when people say, I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, there are times where it can set you up for failure by denying yourself something. So we, we look at it maybe a little bit differently is what do you want to bring into your life? If you're, if you're not drinking, if you're not eating meat, if you're not doing this, what is it that you actually want? I like that perspective. When it comes to alcohol, I dig a lot into nutrition research and Personally, I want to do what's best for me to live the longest quality life I can. And I know a lot of people are like that. Not everyone, but there is a group that is like that. And those are the kind of people I like to share information with. And the information about alcohol has been confusing, sometimes misleading. Sometimes we're told it's okay to have one drink a day or within some category or some range. But Personally, from what I've seen, I think alcohol is a poison. That's why it's called intoxication. Toxic right? is right in there. Yeah, I never you, thought you, of that. If you put the word toxic in the middle of it, I'm thinking it's not that good for you. And I like my brain cells. Well, and, let, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in there. Sure. Now you now you got me fired up. Karen, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you, and I'm I'm already excited about where this conversation is going. Listen, there, there. You're right. There's a lot of misinformation out there, and and society and Hollywood make drinking sexy. Mm -hmm. You know, we love Yellowstone. We watch the show Yellowstone, and at every show they get the whiskey, and it looks sexy and all that. But mm -hmm. here's the deal: we'll cut straight to it. We believe that while we know this, neuroscience and psychology agree not on a lot. Actually, they disagree on more than they agree with. But one thing they agree with is brain drives behavior. What behavior is, is of my choices, whether what, what I choose to eat or what I, you know, do I eat a plant-based diet or do I eat something else? What do I choose to drink? Do I drink Red Bulls? Do I drink coffee all day? Do I drink my water all day? These are choices. That's my behavior. Do I use anger and rage? That's my behavior. So choices, simply put, is, is it, in other words, my actions are my behavior and they're driven by the brain. Okay. Well, there is no, hear this clearly, there is no level of alcohol that's good for a brain. Alcohol damages the brain, period. Marijuana damages the brain. You may get short, you will get short-term relief from both. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a party, you're feeling nervous and you smoke something or you drink something, yes, you're going to get relief in the moment. But long-term, even cigarettes, they do not help the brain they hurt the brain. So then the question goes back to Susan's question. What do you want? Do you want longevity? Do you want health? Do you want, do you want quality of life? Mm -hmm. Then you need to think about everything we put in our body and everything we do not put in our body. I'm right there with you. I know in my life, I'm dealing with someone close to me who has Alzheimer's, and I know numerous friends, especially as we're getting older, our parents are getting even older. It works that way. And many of them have Alzheimer's, unfortunately, and that's like the worst of the worst. To see someone at, at lose their mental capacity in so many different ways, and alcohol contributes to that. 100%. Yes, yes. Absolutely, it does. We we're writing this new book, Actualized Recovery. Actualized Recovery is not about 12 steps. Recovery is a brain thing. That's the title of the book. Comes out in February. 
but there is a section in the brain in the book about this and we talk about, about both of our mothers dementia alzheimer's and you if you want a question does is does brain drive behavior well then just look at alzheimer's and dementia mm-hmm. um brain brain function yes right if we are the quality of our brain function and you're right particularly as we're aging and i i actually say every decision that i'm making is for my 90 year old self and i say that i remind myself even if something is a little difficult or maybe i'm feeling a little hurty poo because i'm not getting what somebody else does um i'll i'll just say hey this is for your 90 year old self and you know what you want to be like i'm sensing some positive vocabulary that you're <laughs> using <laughs> so i i feel like we're getting away from deprivation which yeah. we also use when we're talking about diet because people feel like I can't eat this. I'm being deprived. And we right. say, no, you're right. making a choice. It's your right. choice. And you, and it's for you. It's a, almost a gift to you right. in the future, like you're saying. So I, I get the, the positive framing. So one of the big, one of the big addictions today right now, and, and it is not as much alcohol not even cocaine. There's a lot of people who drink and and don't have a problem with it. There's a lot of, there's some people in the past who have, who have used cocaine and not had a problem with it. Ultra processed foods mm-hmm. is a game changer. Right. Ultra processed foods have been modeled and made scientifically engineered to addict my brain. So my brain craves this product. Right. And what do I want in my life? So what we talk about is freedom. Life without alcohol is actually freedom. Life without cigarettes is freedom. And I believe life in choosing healthy whole foods is freedom compared to the my knees hurting because I'm eating inflammatory foods and I can't right. walk and I can't go up the stairs and I can't pick up my grandkids. Right. That's not freedom. So again, what do you want? It is a fantastic place to come from. Every time we see a new medical professional or or anybody for health related, neither Dave nor I take any prescription medications, have not for, I don't know, a decade? Yeah, more than a decade. And, um, and they're always surprised. And they look, and you can see the glasses come down, and then they look, and then they look at our age. I'm 58, Dave is 61. Yeah. And... <laughs> and I think it's been accepted now that this is the norm, but it's not. This is this is what you put into your body and what you feed your brain makes all the difference. I just want to say a, a few things. One is since January 1 of last year, both my partner Gary and I have not had any alcohol. We just made a decision, no more. And I never had an alcohol problem. You know, a little wine here, a little beer here, but yeah was just a, a conscious decision. I haven't really missed it. It's funny sometimes when you socialize and you're in an environment where everyone's drinking and you're not. And I've been in this, I've made that choice for many years sometimes when I knew I had to drive or something. And you see how ridiculous everyone looks. <laughs> <laughs> and mm-hmm. they think, and they think they're, you know, really a person they they and dance. entertaining. <laughs> but I say this a lot on this program that we live on a very difficult planet. And I don't know if there's more than there has been in the past, or we just have the tools to evaluate things. But many people have anxiety. Many people are depressed. Many people come home after a hard day and need to unwind. And alcohol is right there. And as you mentioned before in the movies and on these television series that we see, it just looks like, oh, a, a glass of good dry red wine. It's just delicious. I I want that, but and I, and I don't it, want it. It's it's position and everything is sold to us, right? It's about profit. It's not about people. I don't know what it was like in the U.S., but in Canada, we had um, liquor stores were considered an essential service, right? So you couldn't go to the gym. You couldn't go out anywhere to to go to a yoga class or do anything like our, that. Our farmers markets were closed. Yeah, our farmers markets but, were closed. But McDonald's but, are open. Right. Like what's and the gyms yeah. are closed. Yeah. Like, like, like let's look at this in a holistic point of view. What actually are we doing? 
I can go get my smokes, my drinks, my fast food, but I can't eat. I can't go to farmer's market or a gym or a beach. Right. What is that about? And, yeah. and you want to talk about making an, a negative impact on people. They're not just physical life, their emotional and social life. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I, I actually was just proofing the part of the book where we're talking about um, what, what is it in a bigger life sense? So you said, you know, people want to be, they want to relax when they come home and they want these things, but in the bigger sense, what is it like, put some thought and energy to it. What do you truly want? And if you want to be able to relax, then let's go upstream. What are you relaxing from? What is in your life right now that you feel the need that you have to come home and de-stress from? And can we get to the root of that? And can we make decisions to not have that in your environment anymore? But sometimes, you know, that takes work. Mm-hmm. Well, well, <laughs> it takes well, well, work. Hold on. Mm. No, no, hang on. I'm, I'm going question, <laughs> to question that and say, which you're talking about a short term next 10 minutes. What brings me of relief? Of course. Yeah. Okay. At, at what long-term price. Right. So now you get to lay your values over this. Right. And now you get to think about what it is that you want in your life in a longer term period. If you want a short-term relief, drink, smoke weed, whatever that is, because there is a short-term relief, right. mm-hmm. but there is long-term consequences. You cannot get away from this. Okay. So, that's hard in our society. All right. Our why? politicians go for the short-term fix. Our capitalistic environment goes for the short-term. But that's easy that's fix. outsourcing your health to somebody but else. Hang on. Yeah. And you're responsible for this. The it, government isn't responsible for my health. It, making a salad may take it, more effort yeah. than going to McDonald's or a Pizza Hut or whatever that is. Yeah. All right. So if you're talking about I'm going to run my life based on ease, go for it. But I I choose to run my life based on the things that I want in my life and my values. So, so it becomes a very, now, now we become grateful. Not everybody likes their job, mm-hmm. but the job, but, but you can be grateful for what the job provides. So you get to choose which way you look at this. You get to choose at, Oh my God, I got to go to work again. Or, Oh my gosh, I get the opportunity to provide for my family. You yeah, that's to, that's and, really and the good. Result- the perspective is really important. Now, I have a question. Yeah. I have a feeling that you weren't born with these ideas, this philosophy. <laughs> you must have a story. Karen, do you have like some sort of Did you see my did you see my biology grades in high school cuz <laughs> my god, a whole, whole terrible. Um no, this is this has been an evolution in life. This has been and as we look as I look back There are things that happen in my life, some very painful, but have built on this to put us in this position and certainly me in this position to be able to help people. And it's been the last 12 or 13 years, we've run a residential program, private residential program. We have worked with and helped more than 2000 people put their life back together and have hope. Uh, We now run Emergo Academy, which is an online community. And our hope there is to impact even more people. So no, this hasn't been a plan. Yeah, we we went all, all in. We cannonballed. If you're if you're gonna make a change, create a new business where you actually have to live with people 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and help them craft the life that they want. So we had we had an amazing team. We had up to 26 staff. Um, a big part of it, and this is the synergy between you and us, was food was the fundamental, right? People came to us. And they were, um, their candle was flickering. They were very unhealthy. And how we started to rebuild was water, nutrients, movement. um, But food was so important, right? So we had people that was shattered digestion. We -hmm. had people that were on 100% ultra processed food diets before they came. We had people that didn't know how to boil water to be able to cook anything we're talking 35 year old moms and then we they would spend time with our chefs to learn fundamentals in a kitchen Mm -hmm. so we had three full-time chefs and one of the first things that we did with everybody was introduce them to um the basics in chopping preparation um, mise en place and then graduating into shopping looking at labels making decisions as as you begin to change 
the brain. So we are a brain first approach to all things recovery and food feeds the brain, right? So you, when, when you start to feel better and here is the transition, when people started to feel the change, when they started to feel greater energy, when they started to feel like themselves again, when there was more hope, the, it's not as hard as it was a week ago. And next week isn't as hard as it's going to be today. So that momentum continues to grow. So the brain and the nervous system, as they release trauma, as they begin to heal, it it does get easier. So even somebody who's saying, man, I don't think I can ever give this up or, you know, it's hard. It's to get momentum is hard. It's like starting to push a car from a park, but it gains momentum really quickly. Did, did either of you, both of you have a problem with alcohol in the past? Well, I had problems with lots of stuff, <laughs> not just alcohol. Sure. Welcome to the 1980s and welcome, welcome to, you know, a young kid and uh, an athlete and yeah, made a lot of bad decisions. But it wasn't, I, I would say food related things are as important as anything that you eat. Sure. Drink. Right? Well, so overall, I, I went to a pretty good college. I went to Bucknell University in yeah. the late 70s, early 80s. And um, too many of my friends graduated as alcoholics because of the environment at the school. Well, except that numbers today show us that there's there's a larger percentage of alcohol problems today in America than ever has been before per capita. Mm -hmm. In other words, for, even if you take into consideration population changes and all that, and and there has been a huge spike since COVID and the pandemic, mm -hmm. and that has maintained. Mm -hmm. uh, there are studies that show that um, over 30%, it's like 35% of all lawyers mm -hmm. meet the definition of of um, substance abuse with alcohol, just alcohol. So one in that's one, that's more than one in one in three. That's a significant number, and these are white collar people who right. are who are you know uh, good people. Here's the thing: we believe people are good people. Mm -hmm. There's greatness in all of us. We don't purposely want to fail, and yet we do over time. And so now I'm going to go back to. If I'm doing a behavior that I don't want, I'm eating ice cream every day mm -hmm. and I don't want that. So how do I change? Well, first I have to, I have to get grounded in what I want, but do it in small, small bite-sized pieces. That's why we love dry January. That's why we, and you talked mm -hmm. about a, a V January for vegans, take it on for 30 days. It's like dipping your toe in. You don't, mm -hmm. the, the, the thought of saying you can't have this crutch that you've used right. for all your life whether that's sugar, whether that's alcohol, whether whatever that is, you can't have it for the rest of your life. It's overwhelming. Try for 30 days and then be honest. How do you feel hmm. at the end of 30 days? Now make decisions. And as you, maybe you want to reintroduce something, maybe you want to test it. Again, be honest. What's the impact on your hmm. body, your mind? Do you have brain fog? How's your sleep? Be, be clear on what happens uh, with your ego side. So I love these 30 day periods, mm -hmm. by the way, if you didn't start January 1st on either one of those, start today, start tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. Do a, a set period of time. Make a commitment. 28, yeah, 28 absolutely. days. Absolutely. It's, it's so breath. much, it's so much more digestible or manageable to think you're not taking on this thing forever. And then maybe it ends up to be forever. Well, th yeah, that's the beautiful part of all of us. We're all unique and different. Uh, make decisions based on what you want in your life and your value system. Now, I, I'm sure you have a set of tools, recommendations, uh, things that you help people with, aside from getting in and, and having a chef to show you the tools of the kitchen, the tricks in the kitchen, the, the things you need to prepare good food. But for stopping alcohol, I'm sure there are tools and recommendations. And you mentioned the 12-step program before. Do you like this 12-step program? Do you take things from it? Have you totally put it aside? What, what's your thought about that? <laughs> well, first of all, there, there are some very good things about the 12-step program. And if anybody gets help from a 12-step program or any program, please do it. If you, if you need to, you know, stick a finger in the ear and spin sideways and it helps you do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm really am about individual help for people. So I'm not going to cast a 
full shadow. However, what I will say is when 12 steps were developed is 1935 and the, when Bill W. started 1940, they actually formalized the 12 steps. So I want to take you back. Karen, what, let me ask you, where's the last place you took an airplane to? Where'd you go to? California. Okay. You're going into the airport, New York, and you're heading to California. You check in, bags are checked in, you get to the gate, you look out the window, and the airplane on the tarmac was built in 1940. That's what you're about to get on. <laughs> For those that can't see Karen's face, I'm, she just reg registered her alarm. Uh, her yes. alarm, up. alarm. And, and well, you know, and we read about all the problems that the planes have. But anyway. So here's why I'm using this analogy. As it may seem extreme and silly, but I don't believe it is. Because in 1940, we, we had limited technology in air travel compared to today. And we had no technology and no knowledge of neuroscience in 1940. We didn't know about neuroplasticity, the ability for the brain to change itself and, and all the other neuro things and Hebb's law, neurons firing and wiring and all. We didn't know about this. So they did a heck of a great job in the 30s and 40s with what they had. But we have evolved. Mm. And, and yet addiction treatment or recovery treatment has not evolved. So we don't believe, and we know this to be true, that, that overcoming a substance is not about, and including sugar, is not about willpower. It's not about a higher power. It's about brain power. I like it. Brain power. And uh, look at spirit is important. And it's one of the five principles. We have five principles for actualized recovery. Physiology, which we you talk about a lot. The body and nutrition. Physiology, psychology, spirit is the third one. Connections, who we hang out with. And our lifestyle, and that's the key to lasting recovery. So it is all about brain power because brain drives my behavior. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about all or nothing because okay. people, when they start a diet or maybe when they're thinking about drinking, they think I'm going to just do less. And they may even quantify what they can do over a certain amount of time. But I'm a personal believer with food and probably with alcohol too, that all or nothing is better than setting a certain amount especially you're going to a party okay i'm just going to have one drink but you have that one drink and it kind of lets your guard down and softens you a little bit and oh there's another drink coming <laughs> yeah yeah and so 100 percent is easy 99 percent is hard mm -hmm. isn't so that funny you have ta taking it out of anything if you if you have a problem with potato chips and you say i'm not going to have potato chips or i'm going to limit myself to having one small bag every Friday or every second Friday, and it's in your house, it doesn't work that way. The but you can't eat just one. Doesn't. Right, yeah. right. And <laughs> and again, ultra processed <laughs> foods, understand that you cannot eat just one, right? Because your brain craves that. So it's much easier for us as human beings from a psychological point of view to say 0%. I am not going to have this for a period of time because if you open the door just a little bit, then it's not going to close. And so Viktor Frankl um, ha has a wonderful saying, and it's between stimulus and response, there is a gap, right? There is a space where you get to make a decision. That decision is much harder, the closer those things are for you to be able to get. So if, if you don't keep things in your environment, um, if you if you don't want to drink, if this is dry January for you, then making a, a date with your friends to go out to the local pub on Saturday is probably going to be very difficult because you you don't just say no once. You have to say no again and again and again. So human beings work really well when we can just say no once and then <laughs> move on. There are some events we can't avoid mm -hmm. that may have alcohol. And I know when I'm helping people with their diets, I have numerous recommendations. If you're going to a dinner party or a wedding or something, and you know that it's very unlikely to have the food you want, eat before. Mm -hmm. You know, there are recommendations we, we, like we that. Do that. We do that when we go to most of our families' homes. We <laughs> yeah. eat before. Just saying. And bring our eat own. Sorry, family. Eat before, bring your own. 
or, you know, if it's a party, you can talk to the host and say, I eat this and, you know, can I help or bring or just so you know in advance that you're not making something special for me that I won't eat. What can we do when it comes to alcohol? Super. It's easy. Mm -hmm. Super easy. First, I can think of a couple parties. You, you're of... not going to say drink before. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. But I'm what I what we do though is we'll go for the first half of the party when people are still coherent. We'll, we'll go for the first half of the party, <laughs> and then and then we kind of look at each other. I just have a sense or a feeling mm -hmm. inside, and I go, "Okay, well, this has been good. It's been fun." <laughs> And you know Bye. what? Nobody even, nobody even remembers we're leaving or right. we're gone. Mm -hmm. And like, like we get Which, so caught up in our, we yeah, get so say, caught up on ourselves. People are paying attention like, to oh us. Oh my God, I can't be early. They're not. Oh. Right? People are caught up in their own world and they're not paying attention to whether you're drinking, I'm drinking or what we're doing. Right. It, I think we think about that a lot, but I don't think it's I want to give you a story of a, um, of a gentleman, young gentleman, well, I guess mid-aged gentleman we had, and um, he'd partied a lot with his brother, and his brother's getting married, and mm -hmm. his brother was asking him to host a bachelor party, and there was about 10 guys going, he said, I know it's going to be a, you know what, show, I don't know what to do. So we talked about that, and he decided to pass on that and to create an event with his brother, mm -hmm. and he invited his brother for a weekend away they went they rented a cabin and they did hiking for a weekend and he got back to us saying it was the most incredible bonding time with hmm. my brother hmm. and so in that situation he felt compelled to be part of his brother's wedding and and to honor that he stepped away from the blank show and and then created an event which he said was far super surpassed anything. And his brother agreed. His brother said, mm. this has been the best weekend, mm. not the other one. So it also becomes, what do I, where do I want to go? You know, we all have friends. Do I want to go? Do I want to go to their house at seven o'clock at night when they're playing cards? Or do I want to meet them at the gym or go for a run or go to yoga studio in the morning? Mm. So that's, those are the choices we all get to make. Again, it, it, this is freedom. This isn't mm -hmm. limiting. Mm -hmm. It really, it really is. I, I'm, I'm more alive. My brain is sharper. I feel fantastic. And um, if, if people judge us based on food choices or drink choices, there's a bigger issue in their relationship. Yeah, I'm thinking of all different kinds of social and cultural environments where it's easy to feel judged. So you mentioned the lawyers that have all kinds of problems with alcohol. There's an environment, a social environment that comes with work where after you leave the office, you meet colleagues or potential clients. And alcohol is a big part of that. And when you're backing away from drinking, some people may think you're not part of the team or maybe you're making your client uncomfortable because you're not drinking. So there's that pressure. Karen, there's there's such a change now for businesses. Businesses are realizing the productivity that's lost mm. in people drinking alcohol or or any bad habits. So there's been a, a massive upsurge in corporate supporting employees and human resources supporting employees to be healthy. And again, this isn't a one-off. This isn't do I drink? Do I not drink? Do I eat meat? Do I not eat meat? The, you, this is not a one-up. This is what is my lifestyle? And when you're comfortable with it, first of all, you don't, you don't care about anybody else's judgment. You, it's not about anybody else. And I don't have to defend my life to anybody else. And I can tell you from working with a, a few thousand people at the end, they didn't care what the other family members thought and they didn't care what their other friends thought because they were feeling better than they mm. had in their lives for many of them. And when you get there, you want to protect the heck out of that. So it's creating boundaries and boundaries are, it's not about telling other people what they can do and, can, and can't do. Boundaries are simply what's okay, what's not okay. And you get to define that in your own life. And it's not about telling other people what they get to eat or what they get to drink or don't get to eat, don't get to drink. It's a personal choice. And then 
you respect that boundary, what's okay, what's not okay. I sure would like to see more of that on the screen, in TV and in movies. It hasn't quite gotten there yet. Uh, but, but, yeah, but, but, I think there is a lot of things and, and maybe we can help with that. There's, there's mm -hmm. cruises now where there's no alcohol, there's trips, there's destination spots mm -hmm. um, where there's no alcohol, no but drugs, hang, no hang on, cigarettes. Hang on, TV, TV and movies are designed to do one thing, uh, <laughs> get, get money. Right? That's it. It's not, it's not designed to entertain. That's the, that's the, that's the label, but they're designed to make money. Right. And so it's a, it's a fake world. We have right. worked with people in Hollywood. I'm not oh, going to mention them. Many, many. And we have worked directly yeah. with very significant people in Hollywood. What you see on camera, what you see in social media, what you see right. in movies, uh, what what is presented even socially on on social media, and the reality are two completely mm -hmm. different planets. And we have mm -hmm. lived it and mm -hmm. seen it, where people are posting online of this beautiful environment and couple and, and they're oh my god i found my 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 uh, soulmate soulmate for my mm -hmm. life and yet at the same moment they're doing that they're sitting on the a counter lashes crying, are falling and off. crying and bawling about the relationship so oh. so we have lived this what you what you who you think you you who they are yeah. is presented in a way for them to make money right so when we say, well, we wish we could see it in Hollywood, you're not going to see it in Hollywood because it doesn't make money. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. If, and if we model our lives after the people in Yellowstone, we'll all go to jail. Right. Like it's like it's a false world, but it's entertaining. Well, speaking of making money, which is what it's all about. I know the show is called It's All About Food, but I often say it's all about money. We're seeing more restaurants create mocktails. Mm-hmm. And I have a feeling that's because there are some people that are abstaining from alcohol and they want to feel part of the fun and the social environment. And the restaurant is saying, here's another opportunity. If they're not going to buy an alcoholic beverage, I'll make something that's right. fun and festive and I can charge a lot of money for it. Because the, on the truth is that many restaurants make their money selling booths because they can market it's a great up it's so a great much. Profit center. It's a great yeah, profit right. center. So when people stop drinking as much, they've got to find a way to make some of that money. Absolutely. Restaurants are doing the same thing with food. More and more restaurants are bringing vegan options to right. the menu. So they're trying to attract more people into their establishment to make money. Okay, good for them. It's sound business purpose or um, practices, but that doesn't change my values of what I want in my life. So if I go to a wedding um, and they're doing a cheers and, you know, it goes on all night long, I'll have my sparkling water. No one in the room cares <laughs> that it's champagne or water. Really? And, and you get past this stigma. Oh my God, I'm being judged. No. And if I am being judged, I don't care. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to be the one tomorrow it, morning waking first up. Of all, it's never about head. us. If somebody's making a judgment, it isn't personally about us. I love the book, The Four Agreements. And one of them is don't take anything personally. And I, I, it's absolutely true. If somebody has a problem with me not drinking alcohol or not eating something that they eat, it has nothing to do with me. That's hard. That's hard to do. It's a good what, thing to do, hard? but it's hard for a lot of people to do. What is? What is? To not take things personally. And to why? not and and to be concerned about hard? what someone else you go, you go. thinks. Yeah, why why is that hard? It's it's I just know it's hard for a lot of people to to free themselves of outside opinion. It's you, just the way we're how wired. About, how are you with people who bring their opinions on on food, and you believe in a vegan diet? Mm -hmm. How are you with How are you? About oh no, people? I mean me. I, I'm fearless and I don't care what anybody thinks about me, but I know right. <laughs> talking to most people that they are concerned whether what other people think about them. It's a hard thing not to be concerned as Thank you go to you. a family event and you know, you're going to get all of this pressure, whether, yeah. especially about food, maybe alcohol, so, not so much, but it's I, a, I'm, it's a skill that, re that it requires some work to, well, I, I want to, it can, and it can be real easy. So let me explain the difference. I wish I had a he two helium balloons here. I would show you this, but I'll describe it quite quickly. Okay. Two helium balloons. One is just on a string here in the room, in your room. 
and you hit it and you hit it and you hit it. And every time you hit it is somebody's judgment and it flies over there and somebody hits it and it goes that way and it hit it and goes that way. And next thing you know, it's three stories, you know, three rooms down the hallway and, and the balloon is just going everywhere based, based on external stimuli. Now get a healing balloon, tie it to a rock. It gets hit. It falls over. That's a, that's an event where somebody says something that's hurtful or mean it falls over, but it comes back to the same place it was mm. because it's grounded. And that's why I keep talking about values. Values will ground all of us. Right. What's important in my life? Is my family important? Do you actually say it or do you live it? Is finances, are they important in your life? Do you say it or do you live it? And when you get solid on these things, they root you like roots in a tree. Mm -hmm. And you, by the way, the strength of a tree isn't that it's rigid. The strength of a tree is that it's flexible. It can handle a storm and it yeah. blows and yet it's rooted deep into the ground. That's what we offer people in anything that they want to transform in their life is to find those roots. Well, we started the new year with organic Martinelli's sparkling cider and yeah. we served it in champagne flutes. It was delicious, refreshing, and it was a great way to start the year. And it looked like champagne. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's And go back to what you were celebrating. What you're celebrating is the dawn of a new year. And we, I think we get caught up in thinking the celebration is the drink or the celebration is the food. It's not. It's the people, it's the feeling, it's how it's meaningful for you. Now, that is a good point because we're often choosing to celebrate with things that aren't good for us. And we do that with food a lot. It Something wonderful happens. And what do we do? We, we celebrate with some sugary, sweet, processed something or other. You know, if we're on a diet or something and we want to celebrate, we give ourselves that opportunity to have that treat. Instead of celebrating, I don't know, with uh, organic blueberries or something, but it's it. We, <laughs> wild, wild <laughs> organic. We, blueberries. Yeah, we celebrate with the wild organic. Blueberries. There you go. Wild organic blueberries. And it's the same thing with alcohol. It's a celebration and we're going to bring out the the old some fine bottle of wine that's many years old or some aged whiskey or something. It, it doesn't make sense. And, and it's like you're, you said in the beginning, what is it that we want? And we need to kind of flip everything. This I, You're going to get to the end of life. And in your last breaths, I don't think anybody's going to care about what somebody else thought. We're going to look at our own lives on that day and say, what did I do that was meaningful for me? How did I serve others? What did I do to make this a better place? How am I going to be remembered? And through all of those, none of what we eat or drink or do factors into that. It goes far beyond that. That life is far beyond some short-term self-gratification. Okay, let's go back to this academy you founded, Amerigo Academy. Tell us more about it. And if people are interested in it, what can they do to get involved? Yeah, I'd love to. So we decided um, after 12 years of living with people 24 um, seven, we thought, okay, now we need to go out and do something else. But a lot of it was because we were limited in how many people we could actually serve. And what we were teaching and what we were doing was so effective, the long-term effectiveness. Um, we wanted to be able to share it with far more people. So in 2020, we took a step back when the world was shifting and changing and said how, and, and people needed more options for recovery we said, what can we do to be able to support that? So Dave and I thought our skill set and what we've learned is so amazing to be able to teach and coach crisis and recovery coaches is what we call the people that we train. So actualized recovery is the book that's coming out. It's our methodology. If anybody's curious about it, they can actually get it for free if they just pay shipping and they can come to our website. We, we want to make it as accessible to people as we can. 
We have free meetups, so free groups that can meet online. We have, um, which are live, which we host and our coaches host. We have newsletters. We have lots of different things that five, are the five day challenge to help. We people. do a five day challenge if every if month somebody and it's it's recovery from anything that you want. So when you define recovery, it's just getting back something that you've lost. So for some people, that can be the autonomy of making decisions about what they eat or drink. For some, that's grief they're overcoming. For some, it's a loss of a job or financial. So whatever you're wanting to recover from is is what our program is about. And then if somebody feels called to this as a career, we have the training in place to be able to do an eight-week certification course to become a crisis and recovery coach. So we've we've been blessed to be training. Well, actually, coaches. we've got we've got three clubs. You can join a club, right? You can join a club. You as can far join as, it a, a for as little as so, club. So there's there's all sorts of free options. We want to make this accessible to people, yeah. and then our, our clubs start as low as forty seven dollars a month, yeah. and you'll learn all about this actualized recovery and all the things we've been talking about. Um, and then there's other clubs uh, depending on on what what it is that you're looking for and what resonates with you. And that's Emergo Academy, E-M-E-R-G-O Academy.com. Emergo is the Latin name or Latin root to emerge. Emergo Academy.com. So that's our mission. That's what we're doing, Karen, is um, we want to turn everything that we learned um, with our very, we think it's very specific knowledge that maybe a, a lot of people on the planet don't have in living with others that um, were really struggling and maybe were at their wits end and had become hopeless. And in a matter of four to six weeks, they were rejuvenated, restored, you know, excited to get back to life. And so we're, we're really thrilled to be able to share that journey with people. Is there an age group that tends to be interested in the work that you do, even though I'm sure it's well, applicable first, to everyone. First of all, they have to be an adult for us to work with us and join right. us. But it, it, it turns out that most people with us are what well, you would define as mature, meaning 35 and over. Um, most of the people who are attracted to this, who who really want to, that are looking at their life at a deeper level yeah. and want to transform in their own life. Those are the typically the people. And we've had, you know, everything from homemakers to retired military fitness people. We've had doctors, MDs, we've had clinical psychologists, we've had reverends, nurses. So all sorts of professionals have joined us. But to, uh, to but, take the training. But, but to take Anybody the training. Anybody can join, can come to the meeting. So it, it's really neat. Um, and so we do offer a sort of an eight week certification course to become a crisis and recovery coach, internationally certified cr a crisis and recovery coach. And the uh, opportunities for you to impact the world are really, they're really limitless. What, how do you feel about these non-alcoholic beverages, like the non-alcoholic beer or non-alcoholic wine? Is that a good it's thing? Not, it's not, it's not alcohol free. First of all, so it's a, it's a welcome to marketing. Non-alcoholic mm -hmm. beer is not non-alcoholic. <laughs> if you read it, if you read it, if you read it, it's something. usually got 0. 0.5. Um, so it's got 0.5% alcohol in it. But number two, I didn't know that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And number two, <laughs> It's it's uh, the grains and the wheats and all of that that are in it are typically pretty toxic for us, for our and bodies. Pesticides. It doesn't eliminate pesticides. It doesn't eliminate the aluminum can that it's in. That's that's like a smoker saying, I'm going to vape. Well, vaping is actually like we we it's been shown to be even worse than cigarettes. Um, why did they create non-alcoholic beer? We're going, we're going to go back to profits. again. Right. It wasn't to help the person who doesn't want to drink beer anymore. So <laughs> non-alcoholic drinks, even, even non-alcoholic wines and things, be careful. Look at the ingredients, mm -hmm. look at the sugar content. Well, look and at what's in it. It's, it's, I'm going to go back to ultra processed. So when you look at anything that you ingest, you want to look at the processing that's happened. And when you read the rest of the ingredients, it's not a health food, right? There's nothing, it doesn't give anything to you. It actually takes from your body. But the other thing is, if you want to stop doing something, then um, if you, let's say it's beer, keep, keep to the non-alcoholic beer. 
your brain doesn't know the difference between the alcoholic beer and the non-alcoholic beer in terms of a habit. And so you, there's more to just ingesting something than the, you know, it's still part of your life. You're still um, having that, which means that you're always constantly going to have that craving, right? It's always going to be there. So if you truly want to break a habit, if alcohol is something that you want to distance yourself from, then it's not about having a substitute because your brain doesn't function that way. Okay. I was really surprised with that answer and I, I'm happy to hear it. And I'm, I'm thinking about similar situations like with sugar, where there are artificial sweeteners and there are many right. health professionals that say the artificial sweetener is put, putting all of the toxicity uh, at, because they're artificial and they're not healthy, but right. the way it affects the brain, the brain right. still gets that, that sugar trigger right. and you're and not breaking your so. sugar habit. Yeah. If it's an artificially created sugar, it's going to have even more sweetness. And it, it's actually really confusing because the tongue actually registers that sweetness and your brain and body then are expecting an absolute burst of sugar, but it doesn't happen. So it's like this, the system is always thinking, well, where, where is it? So you're going to crave more and more and more of that. Okay. So you're having a party. Mm -hmm. What are you serving? We have, brain parties. We, have brain parties. we have brain parties. We have brain parties. We have brain parties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, um, that we, we love coconut water. We'll, mm. I'll do slushies. I'll do, um, herbal teas, decaf I'll, herbal I'll teas, freeze some watermelon, throw it in a blender with some coconut water, something like that, decorate it up. So yeah, I, we, we, we celebrate using things that everybody's going to feel good about the next day. We actually even put supplements, Karen, into some of our, our things. Right? So, so the, our, our friends that come over, like adore this mm -hmm. and love this. Um, and, and uh, listen, my old college, we talked about this, my old university mm -hmm. buddies, I don't hang out with them. Mm -hmm. And just that life has gone in a different direction. Now, some of now I did do a, a reunion in the fall. We went to a reunion in the fall and some of some of the guys are actually I connected with them more because mm. we were both living a similar lifestyle mm -hmm. than some of my really good buddies from college, which I had a hard time connecting with. And this, as you say, people just get silly and dumb. And I want to get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Talk about New Year's. I don't understand New Year's celebrations <laughs> because New Year's, here we go, a new year, hope, excitement. Why would I want to start the first day of that year <laughs> hungover and sick? And then the rest of us who aren't doing that are waking up mm -hmm. early, bright, and we're actually taking action in the new year. So um, I, I really feel that this is a, you answered my question when I asked you about the way you eat vegan and somebody judging you and you answered it quickly and clearly mm -hmm. you got big and you say, I'm, I'm fearless. Cause it's meaningful but, for you. But here's, you use, here's what's happening. You are, you are applying what's okay for you and what's, what's not, not okay. okay for you. And you are clear and you are firm on that. Mm -hmm. And no one's going to knock you off of that. Mm -hmm. You When you bring that mindset to cigarettes, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Somebody offers it to you. Mm -hmm. When you bring that mindset to alcohol, it doesn't matter. It is the same mindset as, as to how clear you were when you answered my question. Mm -hmm. There's nobody going to put some gross thing in front of you and you're going to be or the judgment they bring is going to change you you are clear on what's okay in your life and what is not okay mm -hmm. in your life period bring that clarity to other areas of your a life not just you but i mean people of the people the listeners and it becomes easy it's so easy mm. dave and i moved into a new area in the fall and the other day we were looking at each other do you know we have no idea if there's liquor stores, if there's fast food places, like we did, we actually laughed about it, Karen, the other day, because we're in this beautiful new community that has lots of amenities. Stores and restaurants. And I have no idea. And we no actually idea. had a conversation in Dave's office the other day saying, 
do you even know if there's a liquor store close by? I can tell you. <laughs> we were I can tell you. I can tell you who has the best lemons. Who is yep. the, Who has the best bananas? I can tell you I, because that's important to us. Is yeah, the produce? Yeah, because we have three grocery stores, so that's really important to us, right? And the rest of it, I I don't even see it anymore. So I've enjoyed the taste of some alcoholic beverages, and I've enjoyed the burn and the bitterness and the the strength of some bourbons and scotches, the good ones, not the the cheap ones that, you know, have that aren't as smooth. <laughs> but we recently had shots of ginger juice. <laughs> and I it 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 gave me that same kind of hit, this wow. burn. Yeah. <laughs> this Oh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. It, it strong and burn and, and ginger juice is so good for you. So that's like my new bourbon. <laughs> that's very cool. Shots of ginger. I, I like cucumber, apple, and strong ginger. Yeah. I yeah, like making, I like the burn in my yeah, nap. I do. If I, I'm making a juice for Dave, he says, give me extra ginger all yep, the time. And you're right. Time. It's, it's great for you. So we're not advocating everybody stop drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. But if it if if it is becoming um, a it if it takes away in your life, right. and I don't care if it's sugar, process, alter processed foods, alcohol, fill in the blank. If it becomes something that's taken away from your life, mm -hmm. and you want to create um, a new future, you want to make new decisions. Right. It does start with the brain, whether it's food related, whether it's relationship related, job related, finance related. You got to start by living a brain healthy lifestyle to make better choices in your life. Well, you just summed it up. Thank you, Dave and Susan Kenny. Thank you for joining me on It's All About Food. And I will direct everyone to the AmerigoAcademy.com for more information about you. It's a whole new community, as Susan mentioned, with free meetups and free groups and free challenges. And then we've got three clubs, because our, our newsletters. Next... Susan's got recipes in there. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. And okay, our great. next course launches mid-February. So that's why we're we're restructuring everything right now to um, to launch in the coming week. Okay. Well, I learned something. And I like when I learn new things. So thank you so much for your information and everything that you're doing. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much for having Thanks, me. Thanks, Karen. Great conversation. Yeah, it was great, great meeting you. I haven't met a New Yorker I haven't loved. <laughs> you kept the street going for me. I love All hanging right. out with you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> with ginger juice. Right? Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. That was Susan and Dave Kenny of the Amerigo Academy. Mm. What did you think? And where are you on the beverage continuum? I like to talk about the food continuum where people are on this scale of eating more meat, less vegetables, in the middle somewhere, some meat, some vegetables, and then all the way on the other side is all vegetables. And it can go even further where you do things like all organic or all raw, for example. Where are you on that food continuum? But I can ask the same question. Where are you on the beverage continuum? When I think about beverages, so, so many things come to mind, not just alcoholic beverages, but also water. Because water comes not just in many flavors, but water comes in many kinds of purity. I encourage everyone to use tap water because we're so fortunate to have it. And there are places on the planet where people don't have access to running water. But unfortunately, the water travels far through all different kinds of pipes. And even here in the United States, there's problems with that where water picks up contaminants that are detrimental to health. And that's why I believe it's important to have a point of use type of purification. Here at Responsible Eating and Living Headquarters, Gary and I distill our water. Actually, I use a pretty sophisticated carbon filter first, and then I use that water and distill it. 
and there are people who are big fans of a number of other methods to purify water, but I hope you're thinking about not just the toxins and alcoholic beverages and why it's important to abstain or at least really think about when you're drinking and why you're drinking and if you're willing to accept the consequences. But when it comes to water, it's the same thing. We know why we're drinking it. We're, we know why we're cooking with it. We need it. We can't live without water. But it needs to be clean. Some people go for the Brita filter, and it's a first step, but it doesn't remove most of the things we should be concerned about. If you have any comments and questions about your water, if, if you have comments and questions about beverages or anything regarding food, you know we are here. Send an email to info at realmeals.org and we'll get right on it. We want to hear from you. Thanks again for joining me today. I'm Karen Hartglass. You've been listening to It's All About Food. Have a delicious week. I'll drink to that. <laughs>